My name is Nicola, aka Socrates, and you're watching Singularity One on One. Today, for the second time, my guest on the show will be BioViva CEO Liz Parrish. Liz recently made headlines around the world by uh, administering two types of gene therapies on herself. And I thought uh, it would make uh, for a fascinating conversation if I bring her back on the show so that she can uh, tell us all about it. So without further ado, welcome back, Liz Parrish. Hi, Nicola. It's great to be here. I missed you over these last few months. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks very much. Well, so let's let's start by filling in people on all the sort of uh, the interesting, juicy details. So first of all, what were the two gene therapies that you administered on yourself? Where, when, and how did it happen? Okay, so BioViva is a company that treats biological aging with gene therapies. So we chose two gene therapies that we've been looking at for a very long time that target some form of biological aging, and I took both of them. Uh, so one of them is a myostatin inhibitor. Uh, it uh, It's a gene that creates a protein that... Um, keeps myostatin from uh, keeping you from building muscle. So it helps you build up your muscle mass. Frailty kills 6% of the population. And that loss of muscle mass and the gain of fat that we get over time uh, could be attributed to things like diabetes type 2 and other diseases. Uh, the second uh, gene therapy that I took was uh, a telomerase-inducing gene therapy. It's the HTERT gene. Uh, it creates an enzyme called telomerase, which uh, lengthens telomeres in cell culture and in animal studies. And what that does is create a biologically young cell. It also creates a, the ability for the cell to replicate more times uh, over time. So we have a, a, a basically an endpoint to replication uh, of our cells. They can only replicate so many times, and stem cell depletion is a killer. Uh, so this actually allows the cells to uh, replicate a multitude of times, and, and maybe infinitely if you have it turned on permanently. So how long ago was it that you administered these two gene therapies, one for uh, muscle mass and another for anti-aging? Okay, so we did this on September 15th. So as of tomorrow, it will be officially four months since four in, months. since I had taken the therapies. And have you grown a, a third hand or a, an extra eye or I don't know, any side effects so far? <laughs> Something weird happening? No, no, no strange side effects. We, we know what these genes do. We, we didn't anticipate any side effects or I wouldn't have taken them. Of course, uh, a third eye might be useful, uh, but I think that would, that would be a big uh, concern right now since it's not considered fashionable yet. So no, no, we had no adverse side effects. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Have those two gene therapies ever been tested before, be it in animal models, be it in other human subjects? Yeah, so the myostatin inhibitor actually had been tested in every acceptable animal model, including primates. And with another group in the U.S., it's going through FDA clinical trials for muscular dystrophy right now. So that one we felt really good about. Our medical doctor for BioViva took that gene therapy himself uh, over five years ago now. Uh, so the second one, though, the telomerase induction, had shown great promise in animal model. Uh, it had been in mice in two very um, uh, big studies, uh, one by Ron DePino and the other one by Maria Blasco. It had been used in cell culture, uh, human cell tissue, uh, over and over again with great results. So we're pushing this one forward uh, as quickly as possible because it really has the most promise in treating biological aging as a disease. And what were the sort of preliminary results, uh, whether in the animal models or in other human subjects, at the time that you decided to undergo such a test yourself? Yeah, well, the, the animal studies, the mouse studies were um, stellar. Uh, they had had reversal of biological aging. They had better organ function. They had better and increased size in brain uh, from atrophied old brains to uh, youthful brains. Um, everything from the interior of the animals to the exterior uh, improved in quality and youthfulness. 
And what about the human subjects? The human subjects, uh, that was with the myostatin inhibitor, and actually that's going very well. It's in phase three uh, clinical trials with Becker's muscular dystrophy right now, and starting phase one with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So we felt very confident about that. And what would be a sort of an independent way, uh, perhaps a third party that's kind of removed or independent from you, as a way to confirm or deny, in in other words, to... Uh, review and to verify the results. Right. So we have we have one group working on that at Harvard, and uh, we ask other groups to come forward. Uh, groups that are interested, that are from institutions, we are happy to send them samples. Uh, we we would love to have this verified in in any way possible, uh, whether it works or whether it does not work. So, uh, do you suffer yourself? from any relevant medical condition that requires to be treated by such therapies, uh, such as uh, for muscle wasting disease or aging? Yeah, so I suffer from biological aging as a disease. (laughs) (laughs) We all do. And uh, this is something that we need to work on uh, very, very quickly if we want to have a future. I know that it it, it sounds very odd to people. people wonder why we would do that. A lot of people want to live their golden years, um, refusing the idea that they'll die in the future. But this is a really important uh, set series of tests that we're doing. This is a very important company to the future of mankind. Uh, the minute we can um, defeat uh, the, these diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer, heart disease, uh, we're obligated to do so. Uh, so we think that these therapeutics may in fact help in these areas. And so it's a mandate that we try them and and see if we can help people. Yeah, but what what I was trying to get at is, is there any other specific condition above and beyond uh, the, the what, what some would qualify as the normal or regular aging and or muscle wasting as we tend to get older? Right. Uh, That would kind of create incentives for you to actually go ahead and test these. Or are you basically uh, just sort of a healthy volunteer with no other impetus? Right. I I understand the question, but but what I'm trying to tell you is that even in very young people, we can see the buildup and the accumulation of junk. We can see the buildup of the things that will kill them in their later years. Uh, We're able to identify Alzheimer's as early as early 20s now. We can find atherosclerotic plaques in young children. We can find cancer cells uh, in young children and all throughout our life. We're just 80% more likely to get cancer after the age of 65. So um, I would definitely say that uh, since I turned 30, I have uh, had about the attrition of about 1% of my muscle mass every year since then. Um, I'll be 45 uh, this month. And um, definitely uh, with the, the right amount of imaging and scans and, and various things, we should already be able to pinpoint one of the couple things that I would be dying of in the next 40 years. Do you think that you are taking kind of a too much of a personal risk yourself in sort of administering these therapies on yourself rather than, let's say, allowing other volunteers to do that work uh, perhaps terminally ill patients or perhaps people who are having a much faster rate of regre- uh, regression than, than you have? Because you've mentioned yeah. 1%. That's kind of like the average. Right. What would someone would say the normal rate of uh, deterioration? But we know that there's a number of health conditions where that's accelerated tremendously. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I do believe that somebody who was terminally ill should have taken these therapeutics. I think they should have had the right to access these therapeutics. And I think our company should have had the right to give these uh, in the U.S. Uh, to any terminally ill patient. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, regulation and red tape, and we're trying to expedite uh, good work. Um, I went ahead and took the the chance because I believe that this risk uh, could create a healthier world. Um, And with one of the therapies never being tried in a human before, we felt that it was an ethical issue, uh, that we were the company that took the first chance and and saw what happened. 
let's talk about the, the best case and the worst case scenario. So let's start with the best case scenario first, because this is the motivation that made you attempt to do this in the first place. So in your view, what's the best case outcome that you're hopefully aiming for with these two therapies? Oh, wow. Well, the best case outcome is that we see a reversal of biological aging. We see uh, the system become healthier and we can start to work on our, our plan of how we get this, uh, these therapies to the world, you know, to people. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the best case scenario. Um, of course, we still have to be very careful. Each patient, uh, N equals one is, is a big deal, uh, but N equals 100 and N equals 1,000, uh, even better. So uh, we need to make sure, of course, that they work the same in each one of those persons. So let's talk about the worst case scenario. What's the worst case scenario? So the worst case scenario would be no outcome. Uh, that would be the worst case scenario to me. Uh, a lot of people come up with a lot more uh, grueling and, and horrible, uh, disgusting outcomes like uh, death and cancer. But uh, to me, would be uh, no outcome. Uh, we just don't see the biomarkers change. Uh, that would be, uh, you know, that, that would be the worst case scenario. Right. And, and I agree that that will be the worst case scenario for the collective sort of for, for, for humanity or for us interested in this topic. But for you specifically, personally, I would also have to say that those people do have a point that you are kind of taking perhaps a, a huge risk personally. And there is a lot worse case scenario than that pertaining to your own self and health and, and, and so on. Right. And, you know, I mean, I'm always a little bit surprised by that. Um, sometimes, you know, I think that people think that they need to protect other persons. Uh, I went into this knowing uh, full well what I was doing. I went into it um, reading every paper that I could, examining everything I could. And this is my life. I studied death for two years. I, I knew I know how I'm going to die. Um, if I didn't do it. Uh, so I wasn't really uh, going to take the status quo. So I don't have the same uh, fears and worries that other people do. And I hope that people understand that, you know, this was my human right to do. And I hope they enjoy the data, uh, however it comes out uh, positive or negatively uh, from this. Oh, but, but I thought you said that you knew how you would die. I did until I, the moment I took those therapies. <laughs> Okay, and now you now you know you have changed the outcome, or you hope that you will. We don't know. We don't know, but it's possible that we have, and it's possible that um, th that possibility uh, gives me some hope. You know, I when I came home, I, I wrote down um, into a, a transcript that I'm I'm turning into, you know, my diary of of, of things that are going on. I I wrote down, you know, if 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 you could do one action that might save a thousand people or a million people or a billion people, but you might die from doing it, would you do it? And then I wrote, I would, and I did, and I'm going to tell you my story. And, you know, I really didn't know what would happen uh, then. I didn't know what would happen the next day. And um, I just feel very strongly that we have to pioneer a new medicine, that we cannot uh, wait for these slow routes of, of money-making machine companies that have had no incentive to cure disease. You know, that, that's not their business. We need business that cures disease. And uh, I think what's funny is uh, recently I, I saw the interview, I didn't watch it, but I saw the interview that I did with you a while back. And I... I, I noticed in the picture I was smiling. There's me and you and our heads are together and I'm smiling because, you know, I knew I was about to do that. You know, I knew when I was talking to you that I was. And, and, I, <laughs> and I, you know, I felt confident about it then and I still feel confident about it. And, and I'm okay with, with whatever outcome comes as long as it can be put into data that helps people in the future. That's, that's just, that's the most important thing because if we don't do it, we know the outcome. People say, oh, why would you take a risk? But you know you're going to die. What are you going to do with your time here? You know, are you going to hang on to your wheelchair and your cane to the last minute? Throw it aside before you even have to grab hold of it. It's time to make a change. We have to pioneer a new future. You know, we've got to do it together. 
Okay, but but if we were to, because uh, I mean, when we test uh, a new therapy, the hope is that we would then the next step is that we would kind of say uh, have a sort of a wide scale popular uh, uh, acceptance, providing that we have positive results, and therefore right. it will we will make it available to to others or to the majority of the population. Right, right. Uh, you must have a sort of a cutoff timeline point in which after which you kind of know whether that's successful or not and whether you 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 can actually start undertaking any other steps right so that's why we've set the the 12 to 18 month uh guideline and then we can analyze uh things from there what we'd like to do as a company is raise money to actually try these therapeutics in the terminally ill offshores now uh there we should see a, a more dramatic potential change and especially in much older persons and uh we're hopeful that we would ov obviously see their diseases uh remiss and, and potentially uh, go away altogether but it's very difficult uh, to work, you know, in people who are, are really sick and the outcomes are unknown. If the body is too sick, you can't really get ahead of it. One of the great reasons uh, for me to take uh, the therapeutics is this. We know that in the future, once we tackle this, this aging uh, paradigm, this aging problem, this biological problem of the cells, we'll be giving these therapeutics younger and younger. Uh, we, we just need safety and efficacy. We need to ensure that they don't affect the germline. And what I mean by that is they don't affect offspring of, of those patients. Maybe at first we'll give them in maybe the 40s to 50 range out of childbearing years, and then we'll move back. Preventative medicine happens a long time before you get sick. Uh, so certainly right now it appears the ethical thing is to work in the very sick and we need to because we need to save those persons. But in the future, I would say 20 or 30 years, I hope, we'll be using these younger and younger so that people don't get sick to begin with. We, we, got, we have to stop battling the symptoms of these of biological aging you know these are these are really expensive diseases and uh, they they have not moved from the map since we started and that's because we were never tackling them in the right way we have to tackle biological aging that's the only way to nip those diseases in the bud so let me ask you uh, for those of our uh, viewers who are interested in following up with the latest development uh, with your experiment, What's the best place for them to do that? Well, you know, right now, uh, things are pretty quiet on our end. Uh, we're gathering data, and that get data will have to be analyzed just like anything else. I mean, we don't want to come out and say, oh, we've, we've you know, waving, you know, one, one result. So it's going to take some time. I would say that, uh, you know, keeping uh, up to date with the BioViva website, which is bioviva-science.com, would be uh, the place to start. I'm also on Facebook. BioViva Sciences INC is on Facebook as well. And that's probably the most updated um, site. We have a couple people working on that, and um, they will get out information as, as it comes. I, uh, I do tend to answer people's messages uh, when I can, but vastly um, until we have uh, really strong data, uh, there's, there's not too much to talk about. It, it, it's, a, it's a wait and see. Know that I'm, I'm doing my best here to uh, stay healthy, uh, to get the best results. I'm uh, living a very healthy lifestyle and, uh, and I'm working every day for your future. What would be the final message, the parting sort of uh, idea that you'd like to impart on us perhaps today at the end of this conversation with you? You always ask a good question. <laughs> you ask a lot of good questions and they get me thinking. I think that um, I would like to depart and just say that no matter what, no matter what happens to me, you have to, we have to keep going on. I believe that I will be fine. We, we did a lot of research. We were very calculated in doing this. We have to be pioneers. We have to pioneer a future that we want to see. We can't go out there living through other people's fantasies. You know, we can't go out there being negative and, and thinking that the world will get better. You know, put your best foot forward. 
be a pioneer. And if you can't support those people who are doing that, you know, really look into what's going on in the world. Find, find something that you're passionate about and try to make a positive change in the world. You know, don't be a troll. You know, don't, don't, uh, it's okay to have your opinion and your opinion can be negative, but you know, don't be a person that's trying to defeat positive things. Go find the thing that, that inspires you, that makes your life worth living and do it. And, um, I, I mean, that, that's the only thing that changes the world. It's the only thing that ever has. So be a pioneer. Be a pioneer. Definitely be a pioneer. Do something different. This is your life. Um, I want you to really think about your life. I want you to really analyze it. And I want you to be positive about it. <laughs> I don't want you to get depressed because life is hard. Life is tough. It's tough for every single one of us. But, you know, look at your life and make a positive decision for you and the people around you. And, you know, I mean, sometimes even the people you don't like very much, you, you just make the world a better place challenge yourself. Liz Parrish, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. If you guys enjoyed this show, you can help me make it better in a couple of ways. You can go and write a review on iTunes. You can leave a comment on YouTube or you can simply make a donation. Singularity.